I've been working on an online multiplayer arena shooter for four years, and during this time I've made a lot of mistakes and also learned a lot. To save you guys a lot of time, I thought I'd share a little bit about what I've learned and how I recommend getting started. Online multiplayer game development's very hard and takes an incredibly long time. Having online multiplayer in any capacity drastically increases the scope of a game. Instead of thinking about just one instance of a game, developers need to think about multiple and how they interact. If you're new to game development and wanting to make a multiplayer game, it would be hypocritical of me to say you shouldn't, but keep your scope incredibly small and be aware of how long development can take. My game's pretty small and it took me over four years to make. Whatever you do, don't make an MMO. Something as simple as an online multiplayer version of Pong is probably a good starting point, but it's okay if you have a slightly more elaborate idea. With game development, I see a lot of developers recommending that people start out with tiny tiny projects, but I think the most important thing is that what you're working on is something that excites you. It doesn't need to turn into a full release, whatever happens will still be a good learning experience. If you overscope, you'll be less likely to complete your game, yes, but you'll still learn a lot. The way online multiplayer works is data has to be sent from clients to some sort of server. Then that server will relay it to every other client. These servers can be either dedicated servers or another player. Having it be another player is referred to as peer-to-peer, -peer, and it's generally more inexpensive for developers as opposed to dedicated servers. Peer-to-peer -peer games still need servers for matchmaking though, and actually connecting players. One thing every multiplayer game struggles with is cheaters and bots. Even big companies like Valve struggle with this. Take a look at the horrible state of TF2 right now. To prevent cheaters, the basic concept is that when clients send data about what they're doing, the server must first validate that everything looks correct before relaying it to other clients. If the server thinks a player might be cheating, then it can do something like kick or ban the player. This on paper isn't too tricky to implement, but players are clever and can usually find workarounds, especially with peer-to-peer -peer when another player is the server. Dedicated servers are a little bit better at stopping cheaters though, that's why competitive games use them. There are many ways to go about getting started with online multiplayer development, and because of that I've wasted a lot of time flip-flopping between different networking solutions. I'm going to quickly summarize though how I recommend getting started so that you guys don't have to have the same experience. I can only really speak on Unity networking solutions because that's where I have most of my experience. If you're wanting to make a game that uses dedicated servers, Photons Fusion or Pun are a great choice. I used to use Pun2 for Grapples Galore early in development and it's easy to use, their servers are great, and I didn't have any issues with latency. The one thing with Photon is you're locked into using their servers though, but from what I've heard they're pretty affordable. If you don't want to pay anything for servers though, peer-to-peer -peer is a better option. If you want to make a peer-to-peer -peer game, I highly recommend using Fishnet instead. It's a little harder than Photon, but it's feature-rich, flexible, fast, and has a very active and helpful community on Discord. I highly recommend using Fishy Steamworks as well as your transport. Steam provides developers with excellent tools and documentation, and servers used for matchmaking are completely free. You will need an app ID though, which will cost you $100 and some time to get your game up on Steam but there's a workaround when you're just getting started. Every person on Steam has a secret little game in their library called Space War. You can use this game's app ID, 480, during development. You'll have every other developer using Space War's app ID on your game's lobby list if you do this though, so eventually you're going to want to spend the $100, but no need to until you have a game you know you want to turn into a commercial product and put on Steam. I've linked resources on getting started with either of these networking solutions in the description. Let me know if you have any questions about getting started with online multiplayer game development in the comments. Thanks for watching, and I hope you learned a little something.